what we're going to do this afternoon um i hope that uh, i hope that this is uh, i hope that this is going to work okay um it should be sharing the screen the screen sharing should come be coming up now okay now um what we've got is we've got a particular part of our project uh, oranges and lemons which we presented at uh, the Science on Stage Cascais in Cascais in Portugal uh, last November. To be honest with you, I can't believe that a year has gone past since then. Um, time just seems to fly by ever more quickly. Um, but since we only have um, a, a relatively short amount of time today, we have 40 minutes or so um, to allow time for questions, we are going to we thought we would concentrate on a particular aspect of the uh of the project which we thought would be let's say something which people could take away and really sort of play with okay um so the, the idea here is that hopefully we're going to give you some ideas about stuff that you can take to your students uh take to your schools whatever level uh these are of course uh, you can see there's some sort of it looks like there's some sort of technical stuff lying around here um and there is but i think that certain aspects of this can be uh with the right let's say translation can be taken to age groups which are traditionally um a little bit uh they don't come into contact with this type of uh this type of thing okay so um I'm going to, I'm just going to go through a few little bits and pieces first, and then we're going to move into a demonstration because the idea that we thought uh, that we would try to do is we would we, we try, try to demonstrate um, Dal Vivo from real life, okay? Um, the, the, the experiments, the sorts of experiments that we can, uh, that we've been doing, okay. So the basis of the project was uh, an exploration of limonene. Uh, and in particular, it, limonene was used as a, a fulcrum, as a center for the project, which uh, allowed us to cross different aspects of the school, uh, the school curriculum across different years. So we had an extraction, which was to do with the Raoult's law and physical chemistry, um, um, distillation, this type of stuff. We had um, some more uh, organic chemistry type of stuff, which was uh, how to quantify using a reaction with uh, permanganate. Um, and then we had this, this let's say, the, 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 the more esoteric part of it was to ask the question, how can we explore uh, limonene as a chiral molecule? Okay. Um, now, I don't know who is in the audience really, so maybe the idea of chirality um, in organic chemistry is a little bit abstract for you. Um, hopefully I will be able to explain this, but um, I will be available for questions at the end, okay? Now, the classical way of investigating this particular aspect of uh, organic molecules is to use polarimetry. Um, polarimetry is one of those techniques which on the surface of it is actually relatively simple but the physics of it are really horrible so we're not going to go into the into the physics of it in any 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 way shape or form but we are going to show how you can practically do something with this uh with this uh, uh with this area okay so we're, we're going to talk about how to make uh how to construct a simple polarimeter in order to explore the chiral world the chiral world around us okay so um just a couple of notes first of all from a didactic point of view and uh francesca and i have talked about this over the last few years uh a lot actually not just because of limonene but because um of the organic curriculum which is uh, organic chemistry is part of the of the school science curriculum in all uh, in all schools in Italy, in high schools at least a small part. 
uh, even language even linguistic students uh, have to do a little bit of organic chemistry which is uh, that's quite a challenge um, but more than anything else the conversations have been around well how can you bring this let's say uh, extremely abstract extremely abstract uh, area to something which is actually all around us okay so we we were thinking about why is why is this so difficult well it's because we have this thing we have this phenomenon of stereoisomerism okay and stereoisomerism already in itself the way the molecules are put together is difficult but then if you add to this well these molecules are not like in textbooks textbook textbooks are flat these molecules these molecules are three-dimensional and so you bring into into the already difficult almost hieroglyphic like organic chemistry you bring in this idea of having to reason having to use abstract spatial reasoning and this is very some students find it very very difficult okay in fact many students find it difficult okay so that's the background chirality itself now let's get into the get into the subject chirality itself is when two molecules or when sorry when a molecule has two mirror image forms these are called enantiomers now if you want a, an everyday example your hands if you notice, you've got four fingers and two thumbs, yeah? But if you put them like this, you can see that your left hand is a mirror image of your right hand, okay? But the two things are not superimposable, yeah? So what we've got is we've already got a... Uh, um, we've already got a, an everyday demonstration of chirality. And for our many Greek friends who are online, of course, this comes from the ancient Greek kairos, meaning hand. Okay, so we're talking about handedness. Now, chirality is an extremely important part of organic chemistry. And I'll explain why. Because organic chemistry is based on carbon atoms. But carbon atoms can occur in different forms. In different hybrid forms without going into the details of the uh, let's say uh, uh, what these the, exactly how these things are there are three forms and they have three different shapes and one of them is very very common and it's it's called an sp3 and it has a tetrahedral shape We'll come to tetrahedra in a minute, so just, just two seconds. Um, how can this be important in everyday life? Well, a typical example is uh, drugs. We know about the terrible uh, consequences of thalidomide. This was caused by one of the isomers. So you have two isomers. One of them is one of them works. The other one not only doesn't work, it actually does bad things. So you've got this uh, this dichotomy, if you like. Ibuprofen, a very common molecule for a headache or if you're feeling a little bit sort of, eh, okay, you'll take some ibuprofen. You have two forms. I've put the, uh, don't worry about the structures. I've just put the difference between the two is here, this carbon atom here. One form is a hundred times more potent in a liver against a liver cyclooxygenase so that affects how the drug is in the body yeah so this this chirality stuff can have a very very uh very very in, let's say <clears throat> uh, important real world effect okay so we're coming to the tetrahedra now and if you want to do this at home this program there's a program called avogadro which is uh easily available it's freeware it's fantastic for teaching chemistry okay if you don't want to go that far paper scissors bit of glue and a bit of patience and you can make some tetrahedra if you make if you make two tetrahedra um and you take one of them and you put four different colors at the corners okay you can make a mirror image of it 
which will not be superimposed, which you cannot superimpose on the first one. So you can try this um, mentally. Now, this is the exercise for the students when they see this in the book. Mentally, can you turn this around so that it, you can see that this will go where that is and the red will go where the green is? Okay, so this is what the uh, this is what the, the let's say the um, the challenge is to try and get across this ability to rotate these things in your mind. Okay, so tetrahedron and sp three carbons are full of tetrahedra. This is glucose, and we have one, two, three, four, five tetrahedra. This one isn't chiral because it has two things the same, but these four are. Okay, so we have lots of possibilities for enantiomers here, lots of possibilities for different forms. You can have uh, different, uh, different forms at, at different carbons, okay? So another consequence, another day, everyday consequence of uh, chirality is this, that, uh, and this is, a, this is because of the, uh, the chiral nature of the receptors that we have in our nose and in our mouth, um, the olfactory system. Lemons of, obviously smell of, of lemons, uh, and this is due to limonene, but it's due to one of the forms of limonene. Okay, so if you see here, this is a carbon atom where the, there's a hydrogen coming towards us and the other carbon is going away from us, okay? This smells of lemons. If it's a bit more concentrated, it smells of oranges, actually. If we take the other form, the mirror image form of this, so this is where the carbon is coming towards and the hydrogen is going away, okay? This smells of pine. You cannot possibly mix the two up. They are completely different. This one smells of, you know, the stuff that you rub on your chest when you have a cold. Okay, um, yeah, the Vicks, Vapor. yeah, Vicks Vap but Vapor Rub, okay, that's what this smells of, okay, um, so it, it's, it's, there's a very, very strong difference, there are other examples in cooking as well, there's um, mint and cumin seeds, they contain the same thing, but different, uh, different forms, okay, so, um, the last bit of theory, and then we'll move into the move into making making a mess here. Um, how do we study how do we study this phenomenon? Because there is only one, let's say, physical way of telling the difference between the two, um, and that is using polarized light. And this means that uh, this means that we have to think about what polarized light is and how it can affect these molecules. Now, the actual interaction is very complex. It's to do with electrical vectors in, interfering with electrons and it's it, it interfering with an electron cloud, which is asymmetric. We don't need to bother too much about that. But what we do need to know is this we need to know that polarized light plain polarized not not circular but plain polarized light is light which is vibrating in one plane only okay so it's vibrating up and down when this light hits a molecule which is chiral which has this property okay um the direction of the light is deviated, it's changed, okay? And it's easy to see on this, on this diagram here. So we have a light source, we have light going all over the place, okay? But then we have a polarizing filter. And the polarizing filter is basically made of material which has molecules lined up, okay? So as the light sort of hits it, some of it bounces off, some of it goes through. The stuff that goes through is basically oscillating in one direction, okay? Um, what we then do is we pass this through a sample, a, sol a solvent, okay? So uh, water, ethanol, whatever we want, something which is not chiral. 
when we when we observe the light coming out from the sample it's oscillating in exactly the same way as it was at the beginning before it entered the sample okay if we then put another polarizing filter but in this case we've got one like this and then we've got the other one is like that so they're at right angles to each other okay i block out the light i have extinction so i don't see anything okay this is at 90 degrees this one is at 90 degrees to that yeah now let's imagine that we have some glucose okay so we've got our light source the light is going all over the place it passes through the first polarizer it's now nice and polarized okay and it meets the sample but the sample is chiral and that chirality as a mass effect as a mass effect so it's a bulk effect rotates the plane of the light so in order to see the dark in order to see the extinction full extinction i have to move the filter i have to rotate the filter around okay now the amount that i have to rotate it by will depend on several things it will depend on the concentration it will depend on the length of the tube it will depend on the compound some compounds have very high rotations some compounds even though they're chiral have very small rotations okay it will also it will also depend on the wavelength of the light that you're shining through the sample okay so lots of different variables now already those of you who are a little bit more practically minded can probably start thinking hmm, maybe there's some things that we can explore here and in fact there are things that you can do here so um, i'm going to move into the, the the part where we sort of show you how to construct one of these things very very simply um and uh hopefully this will sort of sow the seed for some ideas that you can then go off and explore okay so um i introduce to you the yogurt pot the yogurt pot polarimeter um why a yogurt pot well you'll see you'll see why in a minute um just to give you uh, an idea the traditional polarimeter this is a classic example sometimes they're they're flat sometimes they're uh on the diagonal sometimes they're vertical it doesn't really matter but the principle is always the same light source fixed polarizing filter sample rotating filter you're looking for extinction you're looking for where it goes black where it goes dark okay um and you're looking to measure the angle if you can yeah so um a simplified version so i think at this point i'm going to this is a bit weird because we've got cameras all over the place here um so i'm now moving on to this camera okay and i'm moving on to this one oh. okay right so um first of all a light source thank you this is my capable assistant okay this is just a normal telephone okay we use it we're using the torch here we're using the torch. Um, I'm putting it in a box, and you'll see why. Uh, simply because I think that that looks pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So we've got it in a box. So this is my light source. Um, for the <laughs> for our Greek friends. <laughs> we have yeah. some we have some uh, greek yogurt here okay which i happen to be very fond of um as a kilo it didn't last very long okay um right what have i got here well first of all first of all why why one of these um i'll tell you why because matter to the make to the eyes of the thing which is important um because because what I noticed is that these, these containers 
tend to have a nice lid that sits sits properly and you can rotate quite nicely okay so the point is um it, you have to play with different different makes have different lids some of them are a bit too tight but some of them are just right for turning okay this solves one of the main practical problems of the uh of of, of making one of these things which is the optical axis having everything lined up around the optical axis because in the bottom of the of the thing there is always a dimple so you know exactly where the middle is okay so what you will notice is that there is a there is a thing here okay this thing here which i think you can probably see better on this one um for the attentive observers amongst you you will notice that this is uh, half of a pair of 3D spectacles. Okay, so this is a half of a three of 3D spectacles. Now, um, you could, Francesca just told me that you can buy buy these. I think there is fifty pair, <laughs> fifty pairs for twelve euros fifty on Amazon or something. I mean, this is this is why the world is is in the way it in the in the state that it's in, um, or you can steal them from a 3D cinema um, as long as they're not the red blue ones. Okay. So what have we got here? We've actually got a polarizing filter. Okay. And I will, I will show you how, how this works by just sort of putting this on here. Now you can see the light and as I turn it, okay, the light is disappearing and then it's coming back again. Okay. Now I did this. I did this sort of fairly roughly. So um, let's just have a look. There, there it is. That's it. That's it. Okay. So um, you can see I'm just sort of playing with this. I'm just rotating it, and the 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 light is is getting stronger. And it's getting weaker. Okay. Now for those of you who are a little bit more technically minded. Um, this can be used to demonstrate Malice's law, if you if you if you want to. Okay, Malice's law is the law which states that when you have two polarizing filters, as you rotate them, you get an extinction, and then it comes back to ah oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, my shoulder's not so good. Um, it comes back to being visible again. So basically, what you get is you get, you get like a, a a sine wave pattern. Okay, so. Or a cosine way, a cosine pattern. Okay, so this is the this is our sort of very basic um, basic setup. We have a little bit of black paper in in the in the in the the container just to make it just to make it a little bit uh, darker. That's all because um, it's it's good for the it's good for the contrast. Okay. Um, the other the other part obviously is the second the second polarizing filter sticks on the top okay um this you could put a goniometer on it if you wish and in fact i can show you for example this is mine this is my lego version okay with a webcam um oh, and no, no it's okay, okay. It's, it's okay oh, it's, it's, it's okay well, there you go, goniometer, 0, 180, 270, and 90, okay? So you, so you can put that you can put that on the top there, okay? Um, so we're now ready to try and uh, have a look at some polarimetry stuff. Um, just one last thing about these, these glasses. Um, if you're curious, and again, this could be a curiosity to bring to your students, how does 3D cinema work? Well, when you put the glasses on, you have one filter is like this and one filter is like this. And this tricks the, the brain into creating a three-dimensional image mm -hmm. when it uh, recomposes the image uh, um, for perception. Okay, so... I'm going to stand up now because I, otherwise I'm going to make a mess. So um, you're going to see my stomach. <coughs> there you go. Okay. Right. Okay. So here we go. 
Um, we're going to start with some water. Okay, so we've got some water here. Okay, now again, um, cheap materials, we are using jam jars. Okay, so we're just using uh, ordinary sort of glass containers, nothing special. Obviously, if you can, if you have uh, measuring cylinders or what have you that fit in here, this is fine. Okay, but since we're looking for something that is really is make it at home uh, in your kitchen, this is this is this is fine. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I've marked on here, I've marked a point which is uh, which is sort of a zero point. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to. Yeah. Move this around until I get to... Ah, there it is. Okay, you can see it's, it's gone dark. Okay, uh, this is this is okay. possibly... There we go, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it just needs a little bit of alignment, that's all. Okay, so it's gone dark. It's gone as dark as possible. Okay, yeah. so what I've done is I've made it... I've made a zero mark, okay? Okay. Now, I'm going to replace the water with Saccharose. sucrose, sugar, normal sugar, okay? Okay. Um, it's quite concentrated. It's about 60 grams with uh, 40 grams of water, something like that. So it's quite concentrated. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this mm -hmm. to a line here. Now, what you can notice... Let me just leave that there a minute. What you can notice, move your hand. Okay. <laughs> you can't get the staff these days. Um, you can notice that it's come bright again. Okay. So what we have to do is we have to turn it to make it go dark. Now you can see it's starting to go dark again. Now there's a bit of color interference here. There's a bit of color. Um, what's it called? Purple. Birefringence. Birefringence. Sorry, I can't remember what it is in English. Okay, so there's a bit of birefringence, which is exaggerated when you have sugar solutions. Okay, but I can tell you, I'll tell you something about what you can do about that. If I go this way, you can see it's getting brighter. So I don't go that way. I go towards getting it dark. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say this is the this is the darkest I'm going to get it. Something like this. Okay, and what you can see here, oh, I think this one, no. this one has, uh, has stopped. Okay. This one seems to have uh, the, dro the, dro the droid cam seems to have uh, have blocked seems to have blocked up. But basically, um, no. what you can see is, let me just see. I'm trying to be too technical here. I think. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. It's it's just mm. it'll be a uh, it'll be the program. Okay, but what you can see is actually here we go ha. i think you can see okay. oops mm -hmm. oops there water. okay you can see there's there's a difference so the water was here where francesca's finger is and we're now here this is the sucrose yeah okay so Another common or garden everyday sugar is fructose, fruit sugar. Okay, so let's just get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. And this is just fructose. It's exactly, it's the same sort of concentration. We're talking about uh, 60 grams of sugar, 60 grams of the fructose with maybe 40 grams of water, something like that. I'm going to put it back to the zero with the water. And again, notice, notice that it is, there's light. Okay. Now, if I start to, if I start to move it the way I moved the, the, the sucrose, what you can see is it gets brighter. So to get it darker, to get it darker, I need to turn it the other way. Okay. So I'm just going to, so excuse me, I'm just going to bring this other uh, cam camera over two seconds. And let's see if this might be upside down. <laughs> mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. 
Right, what you can see is I've now come this way. Yeah? So what we've got, what we've demonstrated with something which is extremely simple, we've, we've demonstrated a fundamental um, a fundamental property of uh, of sugar solutions, which is that you can different sugars, in this case sucrose and um, fructose, different sugars can rotate light plain polarized light in different directions so we have what is called uh dextro rotatory and laver rotatory okay these are the these are the old uh, the old definitions so very very simple we have the we have the the yogurt pot which is the sample tube we have the jam jar which goes in to hold the sample. We have two filters from two th th filters from 3D 3D glasses, okay? And well, a little bit of water. Yeah? So it's actually it's actually pretty it's actually pretty simple, okay? Now, you could say well, do we, we need to maybe um, make this a little bit more accurate. Well, of course you can, if you have a bit more time, um, you can start to sort of really sort of play around with this. Um, and you can, uh, you can make something like now, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately the, the droid cam stopped. So, um, I will have to bring in this one. Okay. So that's this, this one here. Okay. So you can see my, uh, I'm going to stand up, and what we have here, what we have here is uh, very simply, it's Lego basically. Okay, don't worry about it. It looks comp complicated, but it's not. It's just literally a place where I can put the tube. Okay, a place where I can put the tube, um, and some gears that allow me to turn it a little bit more accurately. Okay, so. I'm just turning it a little bit more like that, a little bit like this. Okay, so let's try let's try this with some water. Okay, and just need to close that. Close this up. I need a light. Okay, right. So this is what I'm. This is what I'm showing here, okay? So, what you can see, this is just this is just water, okay? So I'm just going to uh, make sure that this is turning. Yes, it is. It might take a little while, but it is moving, okay? You can see it on the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Lego is fantastic stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly the technics is uh, is pretty uh, it's pretty brilliant stuff for making all sorts of uh, all sorts of bits and pieces. Okay, now the thing here is that um, it's the light is maybe a little bit too bright, but you can see that there, that it's sort of dimmed. Okay, I'm actually looking at I'm looking at this part this part here. Okay, the light I need to adjust a little bit the um, uh, the intensity but you can see that it, it does change okay so i'm going to change the uh i'm going to change the um uh the sample this is where i didn't make it with my fat fingers in <laughs> chill if i okay fantastic now because the thing is the thing is i'm a little bit uh, i'm a little bit clumsy as well so this is we can get very very sticky here Okay, right. Okay, so you can now you can see that this really has um, uh, has changed. So I'm going I'm going to see if I can get it to to dim. Okay, and I'm just just sort of 
have to whiz it around a little bit. It's a bit slow. Um, I did I did put a motor on this one, um, and it will it will dim at some point. I promise. I hope. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just it's just the light is extremely bright. That's the thing. Okay, I think maybe the light is too bright here. Or maybe no 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 maybe it's starting maybe it's starting maybe okay, it's starting it's yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it's uh okay. yeah it's starting to come down now it's just that it's very 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 slow oh okay yeah i think the, i think i needed to i need to adjust the uh, adjust the intensity but okay. yeah you can see you can see that it's starting to uh, starting to dim okay, oh, okay. yeah oh, okay there we go so uh, there we go okay so that's just to just to give you an idea of if you've got the time and the patience and the desire you can actually um, you can actually uh, come up with an instrument which might be a little bit more accurate if you want to do measurements Okay, so I'm just looking at the time, and I'm I'm aware that uh, we may have we may need to have time for questions. So just before, let's say, wrapping up, um, I'm actually I'm going to show some of the sorts of experiments that you can do. Okay, so that's just the scheme of things. Um, some tricks and tips. So if you don't see any darkening. So like in, in this last case, it took me a little while to get it to, to go get around. Um, if you're using webcams and stuff, you have to play, you might have to play around with exposure. Um, if you're using a smartphone as a as a light source, um, if you are using the the smartphone as a torch, which is what we're doing here, this is okay. Okay, if you if you lose it, if you're using the smartphone screen instead, uh -huh. okay. So let me just put this here. Yeah. Um, Nota. Whatever. Okay. Nota. If Nota. if you're using the smart smartphone screen, okay, um, you might have a model which allows you to just use one oh. filter. Echo. Uh -huh. Okay? okay, so this is because this light is actually, uh, oops, this light is actually um, polarized. Okay, so again, this is another thing that you, the students might find, uh, you might find useful, interesting from a, a didactic point of view. Notice the birefringent colors. Okay, that's because this is, this is light, this is white light. And the the polarizing filter is acting in a, in some way as a diffraction grating as well. Okay, so what you get is you actually get dispersion, which is why, for example, in my model here, I used just a one color. I used an orange LED. Okay, um, why orange? Well, because classically in polarimetry you use a sodium lamp, and sodium lamps are orange. Okay. <laughs> But this brings us uh, this brings us to some other experiments that you can try. Okay, um, so if you don't see any darkening, um, check the source, check the light source. Okay, you may have a problem with the uh, if you're using the screen. Okay, it might not be the right angle. It might not be the right type of screen. If you use two filters, it's okay. Usually, it's okay. But make sure that there is nothing in the optical path which is scattering the light. So, for example, here, this, and this is where you don't, you don't want to be putting your fingers on these. This is the polarizing film. Don't put anything in front of it or behind it. Certainly not plastic. You can use glass, but not plastic because the plastic will scatter the light and it will it will destroy the polarization okay so what you need is the 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 the, the part of the, the polarizing filter from wherever you get it and you need to make sure that there's no other plastic on top of it or underneath it same goes for the one in the same goes for the one in here as well okay yeah 
So that's that's one thing. Okay. Um, as I say, you might want to darken the uh, container just to help you. Okay. So um, if I look at limonene, and you can buy limonene, you can buy liters of it if you if you must. It's industrially it's used as a solvent. Um, apparently, it's fantastic for cleaning machines, heavy machinery in in factories. Um, so it's a it's a fantastic degreasing agent. It's actually pretty cheap, and it's chiral. It's not it's not a mixture. It's chiral, and that is because each plant that produces it will have a biosynthetic pathway. And the biosynthetic pathway in pine trees is different to the biosynthetic biosynthetic pathway in citrus fruit. The citrus fruits all have the same pathway. The pine trees have a different pathway, but they and they, pro they produce the two different enantiomers, the two the two different forms. Okay, and it's specific because it's using enzymes. Okay, so. You can play around with this. Uh, you can do all sorts of stuff. So uh, you should be able to get hold of glucose, fructose. This is nice because uh, sucrose and glucose go in one direction. Fructose goes in the other. And this is a clear demonstration of the difference. Okay. You can take, uh, you can take different amounts of the sugar. The, the sugar yeah i'll just i'll just i'll print the question okay. okay so you can take different different amounts so you might have a jar up to here this will give you a really good rotation if you sort of reduce it you get a a, a smaller rotation so you can actually do some analytical type work where you look for the rotation as a function of path length. So this is a typical experiment that we did with, with these, these tubes here. Okay, these are perfume tubes, I think, from Amazon. Okay. So uh, they're great because it's a nice long length and there's not a lot of volume. So you've got uh, you've got a, a nice tube to, to fill up. You can use test tubes. Test tubes will work fine. Okay, so you can do this type of thing. Um, I mentioned kinetics. You can take some sucrose solution and add some HCl. Now, this, as Francesca just pointed out to me, in the kitchen, you wouldn't use HCl. You would use uh, uh, lemon juice, citric acid. Okay, the acid in citric acid is enough to hydrolyze the uh, so hydrolyze the sugar, and we'll go from sucrose to fructose plus glucose. Now the the thing here, the thing here is that sucrose is positive, positive rotation. Glucose is a positive rotation, but fructose is negative. This is about minus 90, somewhere around that. I can't remember precisely. Sucrose is about plus 60, mm -hmm. and glucose is about plus 50, okay? So what happens, the, so, the, 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 angle, the angle of rotation that you have to rotate the container by is basically the arithmetic sum or the weighted sum of what you have in the mixture. So it starts off all positive, and since this is bigger, it starts decreasing. And you can see this on the graph, okay? And this is actually quite fast. This was 10 minutes. Um, and if you can, and so what you get is it goes from positive and eventually, <laughs> It goes negative, okay? Have you ever heard of inverted sugar? And there is actually an enzyme that does this, okay? But 
industrially we use acid <laughs> okay inverted sugar is a mixture of fructose and glucose okay why do we use this well because it has particular properties in the mouth okay mechanical properties of taste which it has a full a full type of flavor a full type of taste um so you use this when you're making icing on cakes for example because it comes out nice and rich and nice and yeah nice and full okay this is something you can measure if you're into the hardcore kinetics if anyone is a high school teacher and really wants to let's say think about doing some hardcore kinetics get in touch with me because i've got the papers on how to do that uh, and i i have done that and i've got some uh, i've got some good practical advice for that okay another another one and this is really easy dead easy you don't you don't even need to make different lengths of solutions you just need one solution or two solutions the water and the sugar okay what happens to the rotation when you change the wavelength I let you find out because this is actually quite surprising. It is quite surprising. How can you change the wavelength of the light? Well, if you're using the smartphone, you can change the color of the screen. Uh, or you can quite simply, and I, I've done this in both ways, um, use photographic gels, the colored gels that people put on filters, uh, flash filters, or different colored LEDs, okay? Um, you can use all sorts of different uh, ways just to get um, a reasonably, let's say, a reasonably precise wavelength. Uh, there, will be, there will be a range, but it's enough to, to demonstrate a really, really strong effect. This is well worth doing if you have, uh, if you're interested and if you have time. Okay. Okay. So, you okay, Francesca? Okay. Tutto bene? Tutto bene. Okay. A posto. <laughs> Anche troppo. Okay. Anche troppo a posto. Anche troppo. Okay. Um, no, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. Not at this point in the evening. Um, okay. okay. So, in conclusion, your favorite yogurt. It doesn't have to be Greek yogurt, but I would heartily recommend it. Um, 3D. Two 3D or oh, one pair of 3D glasses, which you cut in half. Okay. So I think these came from Gardaland nearby, okay? Um, a little bit of, uh, you have to do a little bit of cutting here, but if you're doing it with kids, um, obviously you can do that yourself, uh, or if they're old enough, you can trust them, okay? Um, maybe a protractor, a goniometer, okay? Just so that you can think about how to measure stuff, okay? Um, and that's it. Some jam jars, some sugar, some water, and off you go. You can you can play with and a light source, of course, a torch or a, a smartphone. But who doesn't have a smartphone these days? Okay, it allows you to look at chirality in a very real way, uh, a very abstract concept which is uh, is brought is made much more tangible. Let's say. Um, and this is simple enough that kids can do it themselves. Yeah. So if uh, I think, is that okay? Okay. okay. So I think at this point okay. we will, um, okay. we'll call it, we'll call it a day. Okay. Th thank you for inviting us to, uh, to participate and thank you everybody thank you. for your, your kind, uh, your kind attention.